Yeah, I also have uh, many, but maybe ask. <clears throat> okay. um, can you tell us the, the timeline for this research? Because I've seen. Uh, okay, there is an echo over there, but uh, I I'll, I'll keep talking anyway. I've seen some of the references going back to twenty twelve. Yes. So those that reference was uh, about uh, system with gyroscopes. Yes. That's for lattice with triangle lattice with gyroscopes. Yes. Because uh, I'm not uh, uh, sure if uh, you are aware that in 2015 uh, there is this beautiful experiment by uh, Ir uh, William Servine. University of Chicago showing the same systems to show topological edge mode. So if you will do that, and it, it looks like you already had it in 2012. And uh, we wrote we wrote a paper in 2009 where we showed that whenever you have a uh, conical degeneracy, if you introduce a Q dot P term in the Lagrangian, like a Lorentz force, you will have a uh, churn insulator and you will have these topological edge modes. The paper was in 2009 and you had your lattices in 2012. <laughs> uh, I deliberately left it out. I also did some, um, wrote some papers on um, one directional um, propagation in uh, chiral lattices. Um, and also the uh, nodes which have, uh, which will go only either to the left or to the right, or in one direction or to the other direction. We have um, publications on that. I left them out from this talk deliberately because I wanted to talk about the way of describe the way how to describe the wave in the lattice, because uh, when we come to the lattice, the um, continuum description is no longer applicable, right? Yeah. Uh, even in elasticity, you can't use the notion of pressure and shear wave any longer. And um, that was our sort of attempt to, um, to be thinking about the circular motion, the vortex waveform, um, and come up with a sort of unified description of um, how to um, characterize the waves in the lattice. Of course, you are yeah. right. You can use all this uh, machinery to, uh, and all this analysis to um, look at the one directional nodes and everything else. We've done that. I haven't included it in this talk. Um, yeah, I, I was just <laughs> curious about the timeline. I, I can certainly put up some uh, papers I have on my computer to show you beautiful pictures. But uh, that was not great. Right. Could could we just have a look at it as well? It, it, you know, <laughs> let, let's do it. And by the way, Emil, could, could you could you add in the chat chat box the reference to this 2009 paper? I, I don't oh, know what this works. I'll be very happy because it yeah, the topological please, please topological phonon mode was found in that paper. It's the first paper on topological phonon modes. <clears throat> We are all very interested. Uh, let me just uh, find the two papers I wanted to show you. So, um, yes. this one, um, I'll put it on the side. Uh, it's probably it's an active version. And this is what we found. And there is another one um, in the um, YouTube reports. Um, uh, yeah, another one. There, uh, I'm going to um, share screen. <laughs> that will be challenging uh, and debating. But yeah, let me just share screen. Um, screen. Um, our voice, it's like in a Star Wars movie, you know. And I will show you. <laughs> one, you probably can see. This is scientific reports. Yep, we can. Excellent. I'm going to 
scroll down so you can, you can see that you can use the triangular lattice with uh, Paris and generate it because there is a dynamic and isotropy you can generate one uh, localized waveforms like this one uh, and um, this is sorry the same lattice here we put two different uh, in the neighboring points we have a gyroscopes rotating in opposite direction. So, um, and then this piece, sorry, uh, just forgive me. Uh, what happens is um, the, if you look at the um, slow contest, you can see that uh, you have specific preference at uh, higher uh, frequencies. And this is reflected in generating this particular type of code. So, when you try to, within the lattice, you will have the um, excitation along specific direction in the lattice. That's beautiful. Right. So, um, we, um, for different types of force, different uh, tracks, you can get even double sort of, um, race, let us say, double race. Uh, and you can actually generate uh, a path by changing the rotation, uh, changing the way uh, the um, in rotate in different parts of your plane. Nice. What is? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that is um, a dynamic isotropy, right? And it's yes. glory. So let me now go to um, other things. What is what is left unfinished here is how to calculate the very curvature from the motion of the particles. Yeah, we didn't do that. So, because now that you have this uh, very complete analysis, I think you you should you will be able to tell us what we need to measure to map out the very curvature of the system. Okay, but, but um, a little bit of work. Yeah, uh, so uh, here is the um, sort of picture when we put the uh, look at the hexagonal lattice again, putting the gyroscopes uh, for each node. And here, for specific choice of frequencies, um, you can see we create an interface by putting the part of the uh, the gyroscopes uh, above this line. They rotate counterclockwise. And the all the gyroscope below below this line rotate uh, in clockwise direction, and you can see that when you excite it, you have um, localized waveform, but it now goes in a specific direction. It goes to the left in, uh, along the interface, and when you switch the frequency, it goes to the right. It depends on what frequency you choose, and uh, it also persists if you. Um, have an inclined, inclined interface, and also I'm pretty sure here, yeah. and you can also make it work, uh, go along a hexagon, for example. You can create a more complicated um, interfaces where inside the, this large hexagon, all the gyros rotate in one direction and outside in the opposite direction. You excite the point and it will go around, and you can even choose the frequency of the size of this. Um, <laughs> So the conclusion to make it go all the way around if you wish. So, um, I hope this answers your question. Yes, uh, the, still the timeline. What is the timeline of these papers? They were 2017 or? Um, I think 2017, 18, 19. Because uh, that's why I was saying you are a uh, already working with this system before the 2015 paper by William, who was the first demonstration of topological phonomes. Because the 2012 paper is still about this system. It is. Um, it, did, it didn't take it uh, far enough to be able so, to... Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, we then carried on with um, developing a survey that uh, it doesn't well, what I suggest we can do, uh, us, the association, is that we will add the series of papers of Natasha and Sasha, as well as yes. Emil's papers on the website. Ah, uh, thank you. Bogdan, Mohamed, and I, we will write a short story 
to explain all this uh, very nice background. Is that okay with you guys? I think it would be nice. Oh, thank so you. <laughs> no, 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 it's, uh, for, for, it's very good for the two groups. These are really wonderful papers. I mean, uh, really lovely papers. Yeah. And, 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 and may, maybe, Amy, you could show us again, you know, you have these beautiful experiments that you did with Camellia, you know? Cool. There are even some movies, I remember. Well, yeah. You, you'll see, Natasha, it's really, really beautiful. So if I try to share, can I share? Yeah. You just click on share, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. I show the, uh, uh, this uh, experiment by Williams. Yeah, we've seen this one, yeah. That's right, so. Yeah. Wonderful. Use different lights, colored lights, so uh, this will super reinforced. That's right, because otherwise with the naked eyes you will not see. Uh, uh, it's it's very it's very subtle. So uh, yeah. Uh, so okay. So I think uh, uh, yeah, we can improve. On, one can improve on this. Uh. Would it be possible to have this movie on the on the association website? It's open or uh, so, there is no, copyright? I, I think you will have to ask William, but he will okay. be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a wonderful. I mean, uh, and I think you know it's very nice because um, you 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 you've got really really wonderful results, and I really love also the papers of uh, the Liverpool group because uh, I mean, and you can see the Natasha the usefulness of your models because it it, it, it has been implemented. It's, it's yeah. really it's really really great. It works so well. And yeah, because uh, now now uh okay we have this effect but how do we how do we use it in applications in application we certainly need the features of these waves and uh, to know exactly how to actually uh, Sasha Marshani had a great idea I remember it was a long time ago you you would have a seismic wave and you would you would have people with their motorbikes you know playing the yeah. air gyroscopes to <laughs> reflect exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, to reflect the wave around the building. Yeah, you to detour it. You can even detour it. You know, yeah. that's it's the, it's it's the same with the, with the military applications. You, uh -huh, you uh -huh. spin up uh, some uh, things around the submarine or uh, uh, to, to to protect it against the blast. Sebastian, uh, 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 certainly you can have adaptive gyros. I'm not sure if um, motorbikes will work. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I would love the motorbike, Sasha. It makes me think of Impossible Mission, you know, Tom Cruise doing yeah. this with his motorbike. Uh, uh, absolutely. But, uh, but, uh, uh, but as far as I know, uh, no one has uh, uh, designed it for the uh, earthquakes because it's, uh, it's quite tricky uh, and uh, it's, um, it's a three-dimensional problem. Uh, well, the idea may be crazy. I, I, I don't know if it's uh, easy to implement or not, uh, but uh, it, no one has done it in three dimensions. Uh, even for three-dimensional lattices, I haven't seen anything and uh, we haven't done anything for 3D lattices. So for for 2D, yes, and uh, uh, but uh, Yes, we may have uh, all sorts of crazy ideas, but it's, it's different. Uh, uh, one thing is to have an idea, the other one is a uh, solution with full implementation. And, I, should, uh, I, I should mention that everything that you see in that classification of topological uh, insulators, they can be implemented with metamaterial, and we have a table on specific mechanical system with uh, with spinners and how how you should make the connections and how many spinners per lattice side you need to have. uh including including a three dimensional uh, model there is another uh, there is another challenge in, in practical applications when you look at the gyroscope you have to take into account that the gyroscopic motion in general is transient and if you take the transient uh, uh, notion of gyroscopic motion, the problem becomes uh, very interesting. And uh, 
if you can keep it uh, uh, within the uh, range of linear approximation when the angle of mutation is small, it's still traceable. But uh, if you go further outside, uh, it's constrained and allow the angle of mutation to increase, the problem becomes uh, nonlinear and uh, you will see uh, features which may be completely counterintuitive, uh, uh, counterintuitive features that we haven't uh, covered at all. I mean, the model uh, that we have in, in hand right now is linked to the case of small angle of mutation. So this is the uh, linearized, uh, 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 linearized uh, notion. And, uh, and indeed, uh, you can see uh, for, for lattices, you can see connection, formal connection uh, between uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the theory of uh, chiral elastic waves and uh, waves in uh, uh, magnetized electromagnetic uh, 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 medium. So, in a sense, if you assume that there is a magnetic field with the uh, uh, prescribed direction, uh, that's your scope effectively. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, uh, but and uh, uh, I, but, I should uh, say that all, all it's needed it's it's a q dot p uh, force which which can come from many from many um, many other sources. Not just absolutely, 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 absolutely. Yes, okay, but uh, but I. Uh, uh, but regarding uh, uh, the uh, motorbikes used uh, for earthquake protection, uh, I, I, will, I will take a disclaimer. So you, uh, we may have discussed it sometime over a pint, but it's... No, uh, but uh, hey, I I know. it might seem crazy today, but in 50 years, you know, you would have actually uh, some kind of robot or weather with... I mean... Sure. Oh, this can happen, you know. You should you, you you should just not be afraid to have some far fetched ideas because okay, what fine. is science fiction today is reality in fifty years. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, gyroscopic motion is definitely important for, for for motorbikes when you ride a motorbike because this is how you steer the motorbike. You steer the gyroscope, which is the front wheel, mm. and. Uh, uh, say if you turn your steering bars in the direction where you want to go, it's not going to work. But that, but that's a completely different story. Uh, it's uh, it's not the same as uh, deflecting uh, uh, seismic waves. In this case, you, you would need a array of uh, gyroscopes. And uh, and as I said, it's 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 not been done. It's a it's a three dimensional uh, problem, uh, interesting uh, problem, but it has not been done. Okay, cool. Uh, well, maybe we, we, we shall go back to the talk of Natasha, actually. Yes. yes. <laughs> this was a little and one question. Uh, one question yes, for, for yes, Natasha. Please, if uh, you ever try to uh, simulate uh, wave packets propagating, and they, they, should, they should curve uh, left, right, uh, because of the Lorentz force. Mm -hmm. Have you? Is it is it feasible to to simulate something like that on your lattices? Uh, we haven't tried, but um, it, it, there is only one thing which um, maybe um, one thing to take into account because the lattices are in general they are not isotropic, right? They are isotropic in a triangle lattice. The topic is in a specific uh, frequency regime, but further up. Um, in frequency, it uh, exhibits dynamic on isotropy. So that I think one need to think about uh, while simulating the plane where it will not necessarily exist. Right? And therefore, yeah. what happens to our beam as well, we don't know whether it will be this or uh, change its direction, mm. or uh, will, whether it will be able to sustain it. We need to either generated like a five point force that is doable okay. or if you then um it means that, um, 
need to make sure that it comes from somewhere that actually can reach that point. Well, in, yeah, in my in my mind, I will just make a Gaussian. Uh, well, yeah. the other Gaussian so distribution of the of the normal modes centered center at certain frequency and maybe k vectors. Yeah. And yeah. use that as initial conditions. You need to make sure that yeah, okay. the output will be in the will be present in your structure. That your structure will actually yeah. Yeah, so I, I will I will take the dispersion curves, I put a point on, on one of the one of the one of the manifold, take a small circle and use a Gaussian to create a wave pack. So that will create a wave package which will propagate exactly the momentum. You, you you set the momentum and uh, uh, it will it also be localized. Yeah, I think the, the pictures I've shown you with this, uh, localized beams, that is exactly what you're thinking. Whether this can be interpreted as galaxy and beams, I, uh, I don't know, because you uh -huh. check how has the decay, um, because galaxy and beams has specifics to play of decaying from the line. Um, uh -huh. From the direction, but yes, you effectively generate those lines which I have shown in the paper, which wasn't included. <laughs> <in the program. laughs> what we did, we looked at the dispersion uh, synthesis and found where they had the parabolic profile, right? Uh -huh. so effectively, where the um, if you the slow is gone, they are just two parallel lines, which uh -huh. means that your direction will be perpendicular to those. And if this is sort of extended part where for specific frequency you have two parallel lines as uh, slow as content, you will have at that particular frequency, you will have all the ways it will go in that particular yeah. direction, right? And uh -huh. in this case, yes, for that particular frequency, you may be able to uh, generate uh, Gaussian and maintain it. Maintain, yeah. yeah. My, my co previous comment was. Uh, you may think, oh yeah, that, that would be nice to put it there, but you need to be careful with uh, what frequency you want to put it. That's right. You may not necessarily uh, so that allow for it to, to, <laughs> to be there, right? Yes. Okay. It's, oh, well, it's, well, well, well you have to, yeah, you have to sample the, the dispersion curve. Yeah. So it's some, some work uh, has to be done, but... You need to look at the discussion surfaces and see whether you can maintain specific sort of uh, type of waveform. Uh, yeah. So, so the Gaussian, the Gaussian will will, uh, will disperse, no question. But the center, you we can still follow the center, and uh, the center is described by a classical classical uh, equation of motion, uh, sort of. Mass time acceleration equal to force, and this force, the Lorentz force, shows up, and the center of the Gaussian wave should should uh, turn. <laughs> so the Gaussian wave should disperse, but in the same time, should the center should also have interesting trajectories. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, uh, the, we didn't look at that, and uh, uh, I think. Um, if you talk about uh, lattices, lattices um, they respond differently. This kind of thing. Okay. So, um, in a continuum, yes, yeah, so you would think that yeah, that is what. Yes, yeah. But in the lattice, it may not necessarily happen. You'll just say, "No, mate, you have to go straight." <laughs> no other way. No, just, no matter what you, what you do, the, the different forces may say, no, you have to turn, no, sorry. GPS says I have to turn, and no, no, no road to the left, right? So, yes, uh, uh -huh. that, that's the only thing nice, yeah. about this would be um, lattices. lattices. Uh, some regimes may not necessarily be possible. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting yeah. question, yeah.
Now there is the computational aspect because you, the lattices that you showed perhaps had 30 by 30 lattice sites. So you will have to go to much, much larger lattices and these were, were real time simulations. So. This is for time harmonic um, calculations, yes. Um, uh -huh. and, um, I, okay. I think Martin wants to ask a question, perhaps Martin Wegner. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, we talked about so much about surface weights in the question part that I would like to ask you something about bulk waves in your kind of lattices. I mean, wave propagation should be non-reciprocal in these lattices. So can you use this or optimize this in the sense that you would make a meta material out of it that would be kind of a wall that transmits sound from one direction, from one room to the other room, but not the other way around? This would obviously have to be a fairly broad band if it's really going to be used. Um, can you optimize these lattices in this regard? Uh, theoretically, yes, uh, we can help do that. Um, so you get exactly much or just a partial much, it's a different question. Um, you probably don't go too far with just monotonic lattice. You probably would need to have uh, systems where you have uh, different masses or different um, chiralities, constants. Uh, to generate um, stop bands uh, and uh, open uh, spaces between different surfaces. Um, because uh, whatever I was talking about, there is only pass band, partial uh, pass band, and then the stop band. So, uh, most interesting effects are within the stop band, uh, which is in between the two pass bands. So, yeah. Um, for this, you may need uh, to have a more complicated lattice. But it definitely is possible. We tried to, uh, not in the uh, context of parallel uh, system, but different lattices for biatomic lattices, and, uh, not only triangular, but other geometries. Um, that was for 2017, I think it's 2011, 2018. Uh, we did something. We also created uh, uh, sort of lens, flat, flat lens. So imagine you have a lattice, just normal triangular lattice, and in the middle you put a layer um, which consists of um, a biomic triangular lattice. So the lattice is still the same. The only thing you do is just in some part of it you change alternating masses. And then you actually have um, Selection from this interface depending on the properties. So you can uh, try to uh, change the properties of the interface to allow either the wave, the monotonic lattice to be reflected or translated or uh, focusing effects and things like that. Uh, we tried that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether we, we didn't try putting this course on the other side. and. Um, seeing whether it will not go the other way because the structure in between probably would work similar to where you put the source on either side of it because the parties on, the, on either side are the same. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's not possible to do. I'm pretty sure if um, the case is done with giants, parallel interface, that will definitely allow you to have this kind of uh, effect that the wave will go from one side and gets reflected and the other one goes from the other side it will go through. So it will depend on the direction of the wave coming away. Pretty sure it's possible. Uh, not. Yeah, thank you very much. But really, if you go towards applications, um, you would want a very broad frequency range from which such non-reciprocal um, wave propagation takes place, right? I mean, doing it for one frequency is nice for physics, but for actual audio applications, that would be not so perfect. And I really would like this to be deeply sub wavelength, so, so that this is compact. 
sorry. Maybe you would like this non-reciprocal effect to be also deeply sub-wavelengths so that this can be really a compact uh, wall, I mean. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, uh, yeah. I, I, I should say that that's a very uh, important aspect because these walls, you need to have them very uh, thin. Now, how do you prevent a wavelength which comes like this with a, such a thin wall? in the sub uh, deep sub wavelength and you need coupling in this direction the only way is to couple it in that direction and i think this kind of system gives you precisely this coupling uh with a wave coming this way to to go into the deep sub wavelength and then of course instead of having a, a, a flat wall you would like to have a highly uh like a like the membrane of a, of a cell, of a living cells, which uh, is uh, like so. Then the wave will hit from all angles when it comes, it's not just frontal. Uh, I remember I was once uh, invited to the lab where they have the quiet room. You know, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> An interesting experience because the, the, the guy who was showing us this room, he was talking to us and rotate, turning his head around. At some point, he couldn't hear what he was saying because wow. he was looking in the opposite direction. And although he was standing next to us, we couldn't hear it. <laughs> I think the structure needs to be more complicated, but um, talking about walls and so on and so forth, that probably needs to be three-dimensional rather than uh, two-dimensional. So it's anything. Yeah. In fact, now you have to change the approach because uh, you want to look in the out-of-plane direction. Yeah, it comes. Longer, yeah, you, you have your gyroscopes there on the wall, but your pressure wave comes like that, and then it should couple to your uh, meta surface or something like that. The gyro does the falling. It's just this is a gyro. Yeah. The falls. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, if you put the gyro up parallel to the wall, the wave coming this way would be actually. That's right. But anyway, it would be really, you know, uh, really lovely to, to see a wall with lots of uh, small uh, gyroscopes <laughs> activated on it. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> is there any more question? I'm sure that people want to ask, you know, any kind of uh, crazy questions about these uh, wonderful gyroscopes. I mean, it's, you know, any kid loves playing in, uh, in, the, in the courtyard with gyroscopes. We've all done this when we were uh, younger. Yeah. Sebastian, if you want a crazy thing related to a wall with a sure, gyroscope, sure. Uh, the the thing that you can see in uh, in uh, in real life are uh, wind farms, offshore wind farms. That's right. And uh, so, offshore wind farm is the set of gyroscopes, and uh, and they vibrate and. Uh, uh, the orientation uh, of the axis of the blade is uh, changing all the time and is chosen according to the direction of the wind. And uh, when this orientation coincides with the principal direction of the lattice, and apparently all wind farms, all offshore wind farms, are uh, placed according to the geometry of a, a, a doubly periodic triangular array. Then it generates uh, fairly strong standing waves, and these are the waves which have been observed, and so they create all, all sorts of uh, uh, issues. So uh, it's uh, something that has been registered, and uh, it's it's real, but it's it's not for 
absorbing sound, it, it actually creates uh, standing waves. Uh, and uh, uh, a wall is, well, uh, that's, the, uh, 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 that's the surface where this uh, 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 wind turbines are installed. And usually, well, you have many of them and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a doubly periodic array. Of course, it's a subset of a, a large doubly periodic array. And uh, so uh, it may sound crazy, but it, it has been registered, and uh, that's one of the examples for you. And uh, it all happens when the orientation of the axis uh, coincide with uh, one of the principal directions uh, of the of the array, and uh, it does happen. Oh, I think that uh, Emil wants to show us something. Yeah, it's that. Uh... Actually, actually, from here, it looks like it's levitating. <laughs> Maybe it is. Is it in the magnetic field? Are you we can't on? hear you. Uh, Emil, we can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. You might be so That's right. So there are magnets here, and there is a... As, as you know, the magnet doesn't have a, a static equilibrium point but it does have a dynamical one. So there is a sweet spot somewhere here. Now it takes some, some practice to set it up in motion. By the way, this is always we do. Is we show a little bit of, of gadgets. So you do this, you lift it up to, to get it to the sweet spot. And that's how it works. Wow. It stays, it stays here for a uh, few. For, for five minutes, five minutes. So now let's imagine we have a double periodic array of this. <laughs> you need to connect the motivation, otherwise it will all be <laughs> each one for itself. Yeah. <laughs> so I can yeah, tell you, you can write the image. Image. So uh, yeah. yeah. Friction is always a, a problem, so you can connect these ones weekly, and you'll have Q factors of uh, who knows, maybe a thousand. Nice. What is the name of this story? Uh, that's right. So it's Smithsonian. Originally, I found I found this box dusted somewhere in a in a second hand store. The idea was the same. You have a, a swimming pool and. Uh, but this one was so difficult to set up, and it was highly discounted. It was one dollar <laughs> because I guess it was returned again and again because nobody could set it. And it, it looks like they came, they pick up the idea, and uh, oh, this is much more easy. I'll That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, we should buy. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, it's just sad that Oliver uh, left already. We should let Oliver know. <laughs> it's very fantastic. You, you know, what I think is that we should make a competition uh, of the best out outreach to uh, We should post some kind of YouTube video and uh, try to have uh, the funniest uh, outreach activity. That's right. <laughs> All right, so I think uh, we will wrap it up. It was a fantastic talk given by Natasha, really, uh, really lovely, and uh, I think that the contribution of Emil, uh, as usual, is uh, Fantastic. <laughs> you know, you, you push the boundaries. <laughs> I have many other toys. <laughs> yes. So, 
Uh, I wish everyone a lovely uh, Easter break. And uh, I hope to see you next week. Uh, in a good shape. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, and thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.